Hello, my friends. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit open your understanding in order for you to understand His will for your life. We have been speaking about marriage. And why have we been insisting on this subject, marriage, the matrimony? Why? Because the matrimony, the marriage, or we can say the covenant, is the most sacred institution that we can understand, we can comprehend and, and see it the way that God created it. It's even more sacred than the church. The marriage is even more sacred, more sacred than the church itself. Because if there is no marriage, there is no church. If there is church, but there is no marriage, then the church is non-existent. Because when God said that it wasn't good for man to be alone and made Eve, then he made him a helper. For the church of the Lord Jesus, for the church, when Jesus came and gave his life for us and he established the church, his church, he sent another helper, which is the Holy Spirit. Meaning, for Adam he made Eve, and for the church he sent the other comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Do you understand now the holiness, the greatness, the purity of marriage? Do you understand now? Have a look here. The Apostle Paul says like this, or the Holy Spirit says like this. Foods for the stomach, foods for the stomach, and the stomach for foods. But God will destroy both it and them. In other words, the stomach as well as the food will be destroyed. And then he says, now the body, the body, your body, my body, the body of each and every one of us is not for sexual immorality. The body is not for sex. That's what he means. God did not create the body to be used for sex. God did not create the body for sex. He made the body for, for what? Then it says, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. Your body is to be the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit, which is marriage. It's, ma it's marriage. It's a covenant. God wants to turn you into His dwelling place, the dwelling place of the Most High. So He says, the body is not for sexual immorality. It's not for sex. It's not to be messed around with. The body is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And then he says more, And God, God, both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by His power. And then he continues, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? In other words, the church. Meaning, you and I are members of the Lord Jesus, which is the body of the, the church. Shall I take then the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Of course not. Or do you not know? that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. And then he complements this saying, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him.
He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him, meaning when you receive the Holy Spirit, when you believe in the Lord Jesus according to the Holy Scriptures, then you have the right to receive this, the Holy Spirit and be one spirit with God. This is marriage. This is matrimony. This is covenant. See the greatness. See the extension. See the greatness of the marriage, the holiness of marriage. Marriage is an institution. Nowadays, it's a, a, a bankrupt institution. It's a bankrupt institution nowadays. Bankrupt for the unbelievers, but not for those who are of God. For those who have a covenant with God, marriage is its holiness. Marriage is a reflection, is a representation, is a symbol, is a type of the marriage or of the couple with God. That's why in the universal church, the pastor who is not well married, he is removed from the altar. He cannot be on the altar. How is he going to speak about marriage if his marriage is falling apart? How? It's the same thing if the, the person lies. How can he preach the gospel? If I was a liar, I wouldn't have condition to preach the gospel because the gospel is the truth. It's the same concept. If I am of God, if I am of God, if my marriage is a divine marriage, then I have authority to pray for you who have a family or you who want to establish your family. I have authority to bless your marriage. And this is what Bishop Renato and Christiani do every Thursday in the Temple of Solomon at 8 p.m. As this week, he will go back to Brazil and will be there in, in the Temple after tomorrow, 8 p.m. in the Temple of Solomon. And all the other bishops who are very well married, they will also be doing the same service and praying and consecrating your marriage or teaching you how to have and establish a marriage you who are single and also praying for those whose marriage is falling apart they will be praying and, and guiding and teaching they are trying to give what they received, what we have received from God. We are trying to give to you. Every day we are here talking about this. We are advising according to the Word of God. But we are not just bringing knowledge or theory. No, we live, we practice what we preach. If we did not practice, we, we wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if I did not practice. If I didn't have a happy marriage, I could not be here speaking of a happy marriage because I would have fallen into the same mistake of the Pharisees who teach the Bible, they would teach others, they would teach the Torah to the Jews, but they didn't practice. And Jesus said, listen, for these people, you, you do as they say, but don't do what they do what they, they practice, because they say, but they do not live what they preach. So, my friend, I have authority. We of the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, we don't say this with pride and petulance and vanity. No, we speak in the attempt to try and help those who are bankrupt in their, in their marriages, in their relationships, in their love life. If you want to establish a family, know that in the universal church of the kingdom of God, the pastors, all the pastors, they live what they are preaching. Because when we unite, when we unite ourselves to the Lord or to the Lord Jesus, when we believe, when we accept, when we submit, when we allow the Lord Jesus to reign in our hearts instead of ourselves reigning over it, when we 
let the throne of our hearts, then he will see for us to, to have a happy marriage in order for us to represent him here on earth. We have to represent him here on earth. And this is not theory. You have to see it. You have to see it. And that is why the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God exists. It exists because its pastors, they practice what they preach. And if they don't practice what they preach, they are removed. And they, they go talking about the church, about us, but we don't care. What matters is that our conscience is clean. And God is watching our effort in order to, to help others and give people what He has given us, the Holy Spirit. And speaking of the Holy Spirit, this Sunday we will start from Saturday to Sunday, midnight of Saturday, from Saturday to Sunday, we are going to start the fast of Daniel. And you who will start doing the fast with us, prepare yourself Prepare yourself to eliminate from your mind all type of information that is not according to the Word of God. Let's eliminate entertainment. Let's remove those, those thoughts that are vain, that are empty, that people bring into our minds. Let's, let's dive into the spirit of Daniel who fasted for 21 days to know what God wanted from him and to reveal to him what he needed to do. And you, what do you need the most? The Holy Spirit, isn't it? So if you want to make this fast with us, with the intention of being renewed, amen, excellent. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you, you are not sure of the Holy Spirit, of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you will make, you are going to put all of your effort into receiving Him. Because the day that you receive the Holy Spirit, then you have found the treasure that was hidden and which is only revealed to those who are sincere, those who are seeking with thirst and hunger the precious treasure that God gives us, which is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus. Those who receive the Holy Spirit receive Jesus. Previously, the Lord Jesus lived with the disciples physically, and when Jesus would go to pray, they would be alone and afraid. When Jesus would return, then they would gain strength again. Today, Jesus, what does He do? He comes to us, He makes Himself present inside of us, which is marriage. He enters us and He stays there. And He stays. He stays there at all times until our entry in the kingdom of heaven. This is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Jesus in spirit inside of each and every one of us. And that's what we will seek from the night of Saturday to Sunday. From this Saturday now, at midnight, we start the fast of Daniel and you are our guests. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.